We're now looking at the hypersensitivity reactions. In your textbook, this starts on page 115, uh, hypersensitivity disorders. Uh, it's a kind of a brief look at the different types of hypersensitivity uh, disorders. And really what it is, is a, an exaggerated or inappropriate re immune response. Uh, it's an overreaction to, to substances uh, or as a hypersensitivity, that's overreaction, I guess. Uh, it's usually called allergies or an allergic response. Uh, most of us react to these things that are antigen, antigenic. It's the overreaction that makes this hypersensi hypersensitivity. Um, um, What happens to these people is that these things are not inherently dangerous. Animal dandruff, etc., isn't necessarily inherently dangerous. So the damage is caused and the problem is caused by the immune system overreaction uh, to it. So it's the reaction rather than the substance the, uh, that is the problem here. So there's four types of um, hypersensitivity reactions. The, the first one is type one. Uh, and this is the ones that we think of as allergic disorders. These are uh, they're sometimes called immediate hypersensitivity. Sometimes it's ca called anaphylaxis. You've probably heard of anaphylactic shock. That's a uh, subset of anaphylaxis we're, we're, we're going to get into it but anaphylaxis is this type 1 sensitivity and it's an immediate reaction to the presence of this antigen uh, this allergen uh, and you get uh, hay fever you get runny nose you get hives you can end up with asthma from it, uh, difficulties breathing. Uh, you can end up with um, anaphylactic shock, which is a sudden dangerous uh, decrease in blood pressure. Uh, food allergies can can deal with can cause it. Um, the it's normally harmless substances. You can inhale them, things like uh, animal dandruff, dust mites pollen, uh, that kind of thing, um, is how it gets into you and, and you can do it. Or you can eat it. So this would be people with like peanut allergies or uh, fruits or shellfish. Some people get have egg issues. Um, some of these things uh, have to kind of be injected into your bloodstream, usually by the stinger of a bee uh, or... Um, an ant bite, that kind of thing. Or it can just be uh, that you've you've brushed against it, that it's contact with the skin. So that would be things like poison ivy or uh, some metals. Like th there are people that overreact to say having um, copper on or nickel. Uh, you know, people, there are people that can't wear cheap earrings because the stud in it is made with too much nickel and that causes a, a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Um, um, various dyes. There are people that have latex allergies. Uh, you know, they can't wear latex gloves, etc. because it causes a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Um, what happens here is that IgEs, immunoglobulin E, uh, attaches onto the mast cells and usually uh, the first encounter is is simply that. It's the primary encounter and you don't get much of a reaction. But when there's a secondary encounter, so the primary encounter makes the um, the IgEs, the, the secondary encounter sets off the mast cells and the mast cells release uh, inflammatory chemicals, the mediators, things like histamine. And 
and it can be a massive histamine release and that causes vasodilation and swelling and a lot of those sorts of things um it, it uh then prostaglandins and things prolong the response that is initiated by that that histamine if this becomes systemic we call it anaphylaxis uh it so if you get a systemic vasodilation and systemic bronchospasm uh you'll get edema uh it'll it becomes body wide you people with this end up with like a lot of the classic symptoms running nose difficulty breathing uh, that kind of thing and their blood pressure drops if the blood pressure drops very rapidly very suddenly and very deeply that's called anaphylactic shock um, so um, things will swell closed including the throat we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute type 2 uh, are these cytotoxic reactions to self antigens so that's when the body's own tissue is seen as as non-self as foreign uh, and uh, and the immune system attacks those cells and, and, and attacks the cell membranes and destroys them uh, so this would be like hemolytic anemias um, various allergies reactions to uh, blood transfusion problems um, there's a, a disease that falls in this category called myasthenia gravis, where the um, the receptors in the neuromuscular junction synapse be, between the motor neuron and a skeletal muscle cell, the receptors to acetylcholine uh, get attacked as non-self, and these people when they release the acetylcholine don't open the sodium channels and they don't have that initial depolarization and the, the muscle therefore doesn't contract and the, the the word myasthenia gravis means asthenia means desensitized muscle myo uh, gravis means it's grave uh, it, it it can be very bad the type 3 hypersensitivities are uh, when the antibodies bind with the antigens, but the antigens are small. And so what you get are these things called uh, uh, immune complexes. Uh, they're antigen antibody complexes. And they don't get phagocytized. They, they turn into little granules. And these granules end up getting trapped in various tissues. Um, they deposit in around like small blood vessels um, things like that they get caught in the in the kidneys in where the in the eyes in the small blood vessels of the eyes um, in some of the small blood vessels in the brain in the joints and what they end up doing uh, is they um, they cause inflammation at that that place and it's an acute inflammation so you get local tissue injury so this is not a systemic type 3 isn't systemic it's it tends to be localized uh, at least at first uh, and so you get a vasculitis like an inflam inflammatory response of the blood vessels uh, and so it kind of ends up in the skin so you get hives um, you get uh, synovitis in the synovial membrane membranes uh, you can uh, you can get nephritis in the kidneys you can get pleuritis in the pleural cavities of the lungs um, pericarditis uh, in the pericardium all can be the result of these uh, small granulomas they the these antigen antibody complexes uh, it's usually the eosinophils that clean it up so I I personally and this isn't in the textbooks but I think there, there might be something to do with eosinophils uh, in that um,
yeah, we'll just kind of leave it at that. Um, the type four are it's often called this uh, the delayed reactions, the cell mediated uh, immunities uh, reactions. Um, so these are involved with with T cells, with the killer T's and the uh, and the um, helper T's. So what happens in these? Uh, the response, the reaction that occurs is you become sensitized to the allergen and it's often something topical. So it's poison ivy or it's um, cosmetics or it, it, it's uh, something that that is attached to your skin. And what you end up with is like a contact dermatitis. The, the uh, skin... The, becomes inflamed because of coming in contact with this uh, this allergen or this thing that normally shouldn't give you problems and then the uh, the T cells attack and cause damage so if we take this as a broader kind of thing, an allergic reaction, so it's it's the stimuli aren't inherently hazardous. Lots of people have them. Uh, there's there's an idea that maybe allergies are on the rise because we are too hygiene. What we're we're doing is we're not exercising our immune systems and giving it a chance to behave normally. Um, there's a study done, uh, and I don't remember, it's just on, on the, it just entered my mind just now, but there, the, supposedly there are statistics that say that allergies, um, are much less, much less common in rural kids than in urban kids that maybe, uh, are, are, removal of any pathogens all the time means that our immune systems don't get uh, exercised and therefore they overreact to things um, it's uh, it could be from repeated exposure too uh, although a lot of studies or a lot of anecdotal uh, ideas are that repeated exposure often reduces it. People that are allergic to cats, when they start living with a cat, become less allergic, uh, at least to that specific cat. Um, so, uh, so we talked about the four types of sensitivity reactions. So you can have like this dermatitis, you get hives, asthma, uh, sinusitis and rhinitis, gastroenteritis. You can you can get sick. You're like nauseated. Um, what can happen is the blood vessels can lead to edema, uh, and it happens very rapidly, uh, and it normally is in the skin. So when you have especially histamine release you get this phase of dilation and then you get edema from this phase of dilation uh, so it's local swelling uh, it's uh, in the GI tract tongue larynx uh, so it could get interfere with breathing it, this classic my throat is swelling closed sort of thing big triggers for it are uh, common ones are nuts uh, chocolate fish, especially shellfish, eggs is another one. And people have to be careful because there's eggs in a lot of things, including um, uh, vaccinations and that thing. Some people have trouble with aspirin, with ACE inhibitors, uh, all kinds of things, poison ivy, bee stings, all those things can, can lead to this. And so if it becomes systemic, and it's severe, it's anaphylaxis. So the histamine released everywhere, the blood pressure drops, and you end up with this edema because you're not pushing the blood through. Um, you can have trouble breathing. Um, you know, I, 
oftentimes the first exposure doesn't do very much. It's the repeated exposure that, that causes it because the antibodies build up. Um, and it can be very inherently dangerous. There's people that die from peanut allergies or from bee sting allergies and things like that. Uh, in its milder forms, anaphylaxis is hives, itching, flushing. It can cause dysphagia, uh, difficulty swallowing, difficulty breathing, uh, nausea, vomiting, and swelling, especially asymmetrical swelling. Um, so uh, when we look at this, this is a, a typical lips are swollen, probably from putting something on the lips that you're allergic to and then, you know, not swallowing it. Um, but that's enough to send the lips off. Uh, so what do you do? You, you use antihistamines to fight the histamine to interrupt the inflammatory process to, to stop it. If it gets really bad, then what you have to do is, is cause vasoconstriction. And epinephrine causes vasoconstriction. And if people are having difficulty breathing, you have to give them oxygen. And that's what EpiPens are about. That's their, their self, uh, self-medicated uh, epinephrine. And what do they say? It's uh, blue to the sky, red to the thigh, uh, I believe. Uh, where we have to be careful is in what are we using on people's skin? Are we, uh, so you got to make sure that your lubricants are hypoallergenic. It's probably not a good idea to use nut oils or something like that. Various perfumes. You got to be careful with latex. You got to be careful with a lot of things. And these usually come out in the history. People that have this, these issues will have no problem telling you that, uh, that they're allergic to certain things and please be careful.